do is show you a theory for gravity that is new. Okay, so how are we going to do this? We're going to use brutal <laughs> simplicity or BS for short. <laughs> so in the long haul, if you're talking about theoretical physics, fundamentals, it can't be complicated. There are people out there who are way smarter than me, scarily smarter than me, we're working in 10 or 11 dimensions, and that's not simpler, people. <laughs> that's really, really hard. I'm not going to tell any one of those smarter people where they're wrong, because I don't even understand where they're right. <laughs> I'm simply going to say that in the long term, fundamental has to be fundamentally simple. Okay, so you went to MIT, or you married somebody who went to MIT, <laughs> and therefore you understand both special relativity and general relativity. <laughs> Not. <laughs> People assume that is true, and you live the life where it's actually not true. And that's because you are smart about something, just not those particular subjects, and that is perfectly fine and very respectful. So I'm going to tell you what relativity is about. It is about two things. It's about two observers, and what they do is they compare numbers. And their numbers are never the same. When you guys look at me, you're all sitting in different chairs, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're not that close. Okay. <laughs> and then there's going to be a, a velocity involved, although sometimes it can be zero. OK, so the goal here is to do a calculation not a hard calculation either, okay? <laughs> I'm going to be easy on you. And to find a value that you both agree upon. Cool. All right. So this is ruler relativity. This is brutally simple. So you look at the same thing, that green line up there labeled R. You've got you and me. We get different values for x, we get different values for y, we square it up, and we get the same r. Because we're looking at the same thing. <laughs> this isn't too shocking, hopefully. In fact, you probably learned that in third grade or fourth grade, and they didn't say it was special relativity, did they? Which is too bad, because it technically is half of what special relativity is. All right. So... Um, now what do we do? Well, special relativity is an upgrade on ruler relativity. Because what you imagine is that you have that girl skipping along. And because she is moving, it changes her measurement of distances. Not by very much. <laughs> I mean, you'd have to have like uh, measuring devices that were uh, to, to 10 orders of magnitude sensitive to, to see this. But a little bit, okay? And the way you fix that is you have a time squared in there. Oh, and you have a minus sign, and that makes things weird. 
but we're not going to go there. We're just going to say that's the little algebraic expression, very much like ruler relativity, but now we have time squared and we have a minus thing. So the point there is that you and me sitting here and moving girl, we all measure different values for our t, our x, our y, our z. We calculated t squared minus r squared, and we all agree, and we have dinner, and we feel like we're smart. Okay. And now, if you put, put that into a graph, I don't know, I would love to see this like eight feet by eight feet and on, and on a wall in the list set, uh, center here, because I think it would be pretty. You know, you've got nice, nice little curves in there, those are hyperboles, and uh, you've got the nice colors, and yes, the colors mean different things. Uh, if I ever, if somebody pushes me, I think quantum mechanics is about dealing with the purple areas, but that's the no -seum area. You can't see there ever, and yet I think physicists somehow uh, managed with that, and that might be why quantum mechanics is as weird as it is. Anyway, um, I've got a, um, but let's think about a new person, balloon girl, okay, also drawn by my daughter. Um, so she is high in the sky. We like being up there because it means you got less gravity. <laughs> okay, cool, but. Um, so what, what would happen when you're way up there is that uh, your ruler could like expand. And because you're not under all this pressure, your heartbeat would beat a little bit faster. And technically your escape velocity, that thing Newton figured out so long ago, would be a little bit less. Okay, cool. But what, how are you gonna do a calculation? How are you gonna do something new? Well, um, I started thinking about numbers. Uh, because numbers are brutally simple, right? You can add them, you can subtract them, you can multiply them, you can divide them. It's back to third grade, I kind of like that well. Um, and as I said, through a very long and twisted story, but in, uh, in 1997, I found out about this number called a quaternion. And I was in the Cabot Science Law uh, Library at Harvard University, and they showed this little, that first few terms there, that when you just squared t, x, y, and z, you got t squared minus x squared minus uh, x squared plus y squared plus z squared, and you see ruler relativity sitting there from third grade, you see the upgrade to special relativity, and so therefore, a few weeks after I saw it, I purchased quaternions.com. <laughs> and then, a mere 17 years later, I thought, hey, what are those other three terms that I wrote down in 1997? They literally don't have a name in physics, which is deeply odd. Because if you think of space over time, that's a velocity. Space over space is an angle. Space times space uh, is an area, and space times time is nothing. <laughs> I don't, to me, how logically could that be? Now, I understand the math machinery that we use today drops it on the floor, and so without people uh, uh, right, uh, acknowledging it. So that's just the way it is. But, all right. Um, and now, now you can make a piece of art out of this new symmetry. And hopefully it looks darn similar. Okay, you, so we've got, um, in fact, it looks like it's just rotated by 45 degrees, because that's kind of what's going on. Because that is when, um, when yeah, the time, space times the time will, uh, will work out. It, it, it's actually purely imaginary um, constants. The, the one for uh, the moving girl is purely real, okay? That's what we agree on. And I'm saying this, if we agree on the purely imaginary, where imaginary, I should say, isn't imaginary, like even a little bit. Imaginary is just saying space. And I, and I should say I'm deeply odd person in the sense of whenever I say something like time, I mean a real number like thing. And when I say imaginary, I mean something space or space-like. And I always do that. I always follow that pattern. Okay.
So, oh, look, we're at 9 out of 10. Okay, so that's a good sign. Um, so, but, but the next slide is, is actually um, its own bit of work uh, because I, I, of course, get asked, what is a quaternion? And it's a fair question. <laughs> and so, um, oh, I have two minutes left? Okay, I didn't even notice you over there. <laughs> that's it. I'm glad. I'm All right. <laughs> anyway, um, okay, so we'll just go to the slide. So um, there's analytic geometry that says, I give you an equation, you get back a picture. I say use the same equation, but because quaternions have time, x, y, and z, I give you back an animation. It's exactly the same thing. Uh, except this is user hostile uh, software that I wrote, and I'm gonna have to rewrite it um, because I really want it to work on your phone, and so you can play around with these things so that those aren't necessarily dots, but could be lines, could be sheets, could be blobs, uh, and you could just play with the, uh, the boundary conditions, and the, the animation that would come back would be crazy. Okay, and that's the hope. Um, and these things came up because I was thinking about specific tech, uh, little expressions. I mean, I love circles and hyperboles, and I can't believe when you combine them, they look like this, and this was always a practice that I always, it always surprised me what things look like. All right, so, uh, all right, and then, uh, and there, then this is just a little personal stuff. Um, and we got a nuclear family that goes to Disney, pays for that expensive princess thing, you know, and a dog. And I, the reason for the zoot suit, I am going swing dancing at night, uh, at, at tonight. So, so you know, it, it's going to be put to use on the dance floor. Uh, and that's my recumbent bike, and my car even has a quaternion on it. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> so, you know, I've been, I've been doing this for a little bit. All right, so uh, thank you very much. I just, I just want to say one thing, just, just to put the right... Last week, I was at the 22nd Eastern Gravity meeting, you know, with professional physicists in the house. And I was, uh, I got a, a polite indifference, okay? So, I, although I might, might sound impressive to you, it apparently didn't move them. And that's the current status of this work. There has not been an official stamp of approval from anybody with a PhD in physics uh, or above sort of thing. And I just wanted to make that clear about this work. Yeah.